so if I look a little uh, depressed, it's because I can't see your faces, and I really like to see people's faces. So. Um, you know, I want to just tell, uh, you know, I, I had hacking innovation, and I think, think I'm going to go a little all over the board if you give me a little bit of permission, that I understand this is science, um, but, but I think that we've got a deeper problem than science, and I think it's something that is scientists and educators need to understand if you really want to be effective in science um, education in school today. And I'll tell you a little story that uh, starts with uh, uh, my child being told they couldn't have a hot lunch at school the other day because they were taking this really important test. The state can't stand for that test. Um, and so I got in a little bit of an argument with the principal about this and said, you know, really, we can't do hot lunches? And I was described this honorous process that, you know, once they start the test, they can't stop the test and that the test takes longer than what lunch takes. And I said, I looked at him and I said, really? Are we that inhuman that we can't give somebody a hot lunch? Is this prison or is this a learning institution? And needless to say, the principal was not very happy with me. Um, however, my state legislature was very happy with me. Um, but I think they both still miss the point. And so as part of this, you know, I think that it's important that we understand um, it's not about STEM. It's not about science. It's really not. And the reason I say that is, you know, I work in an industry um, of innovation with some of the biggest companies in the world, Microsoft, Intel, um, you know, big guys wanted to innovate. And you know what? They don't have a science problem. They have a people problem. They have a culture problem. They have employees that came out of a system that is fundamentally broken for innovation. And they bring me in and they ask me to fix their employees. And pretty quickly, I have to be honest with them and tell them, you can't fix your employees unless you're willing to fix your company. Because it's the culture of your company that is causing your problems. When you were two people in a garage, you were innovators. Because you were human. When you got to 10,000 employees, you started to create policies. You started to create procedures. You started to add process. And those things became more important than people. And you can't understand why you don't innovate anymore. Our school system has done the same thing. And I don't blame the school. You know why? Because the system was created by the companies that hire the students. And they want compliant individuals that just do what they're told. Because for the last hundred years, that's what worked for commerce. They understand now that it's not working. But they think that to fix it, it's just about putting science back at the forefront. And it's not. Science isn't going to help us. It's not. I can say that because I work with scientists and engineers every single day. And you know what their biggest problem with innovation is? Not being able to deal with each other. <laughs> I really. I mean, it, it's sad, but it's, it's true. So I can tell you all about all the things we're doing at Game Clinic, our robotics programs, our low voltage electronics, 8-bit electronic music, um, you know, programming, 3D printing, startup camps with, uh, you know, high school seniors to become entrepreneurs. But at the end of the day, all this stuff doesn't matter because adding more programming to your schools or to your universities isn't going to prepare the students any better. I know you, you, you're, you're interested in standards. I know that you're interested in setting the bar, and all that's wonderful, and I don't want to gloss over it and say that it's not important at all, but that's not what our focus has to be today. Our, our focus today has to be getting back to how do we create a culture of innovation. In Microsoft's heyday, they had somebody named Jim McCarthy who was at the forefront of their technology. He was a culture hacker. He started to understand that to get teams to perform, he had to get them to be on the same level with each other. They had to have ways to communicate with each other effectively. He created a book called Core Protocols, uh, Software for Your Head. And I think that, uh, you know, it, it's a work that's been largely ignored, um, but, I, but I encourage you to read it. It's, uh, it's really insightful to what innovation is about. And so what we need to talk about in science today is how do we create institutions that have a culture for innovation. In Game Plank, we've kind of used this as our Petri dish. We've got uh, several Game Planks um, now popping up all over the world. Um, and in them, we use a couple of things that are a little bit different. And I think they're things that you could bring back to your institutions. 
and we've got a little formula. And the formula goes something like uh, the first thing you need for innovation is chaos. All right? You need a certain amount of uh, chaos in an environment to stimulate creativity. And our brains are pattern matching machines. We get on autopilot. When we just go in and do rote things, we stop seeing the world how a child sees the world. We beat the creativity out of children by putting them in an environment that is too structured, not enough chaos. So the first thing you have to do is start adding some chaos back into your classroom. It's okay. The second thing is once you have the chaos, the creativity starts to come. Students start to see things a little different. They start to be inquisitive. They start to ask questions. They start to have permission to innovate. But the problem is creativity by itself isn't worth a whole lot. We say ideas aren't worth anything, right? Most good ideas, and Stephen Johnson's got a great book about where good ideas come from. Most ideas take time to develop, and they only develop when they're shared. One thing that our system does not do today is it does not allow students to properly collaborate, not with their teacher and not with each other. We have to put back into our system a culture that allows collaboration. There should be no ownership of the answer. There should be no ownership of the idea. It should be about freely sharing ideas, collaborating with the things that we see, with the questions that we have. And then the last thing, um, you know, once you've got that collaboration, that really starts to unlock innovation. However, that by itself is not enough. There are two more components to the formula. One is fun. Our brain works differently when we're in a state of play. We have to stop being so serious in our learning institutions. We have to let students play. Learning should be fun, right? You want an engaged student, you want a student interested in science, let them have fun with it. Right? And then the second one, which I think all the standard uh, uh, geeks will really like, is I think you do have to have a set of excellence. You do have to have an ability to measure where you sit with other people so that you can continue to try to push yourself to be better and better. You do have to have that ability. I hope it's not in the form of a test that doesn't let you have hot lunch, but certainly, um, you know, you do have to be able to have that. And so, you know, I would kind of, you know, leave you today saying, don't worry so much about the programming that you're doing. Don't worry so much about educating the teachers to teach for science and math. Worry much more about what your learning institutions look like. Worry much more what the culture of those institutions look like. Because when you do that, you will find that you'll have teachers that engage. You'll have students that engage. You have a system that is built for innovation that cannot be competed with. And I'll just say that, you know, educating students isn't about STEM. It's not about science. It's about being human. When we are vulnerable, we unlock the greatest potential in each other to be creative. Sharing that experience and openly collaborating unleashes the ability to innovate. When students and teachers can learn to be vulnerable in an environment, in a culture with themselves, you'll have the science that you're looking for. Thank you.